I am back at Diabase Engineering in Longmont, Colorado, and I get to show you an evolution of the H-Series machine. We're gonna build a product, and to test it, I'm putting my life on the line. There you are, welcome back. We are in Longmont, Colorado, named, named after, after Long's Peak. Peak and home, home of the first JCPenney. JC Penny. We're here because we are introducing the next evolution of the H-Series machines from Diabase, the H5-400. This behemoth is 400 on the X, 180 on the Y, and 380 on the Z or Z. And you can see bellows here, and underneath those are C5 grade precision ground preloaded ball screws. The idea behind the H-Series is to build a CNC platform that can also 3D print. And in fact, let me remove the front. I wanna show you what it's making right now. First try. The H5 series of machines, including the 400 that you see right here, can have additive or milling machine heads on the turret tool changer. Right now, this is set up to do three different materials via additive manufacturing. We've got a 60D, an 88A, and a 95A in shore hardness. And this is making these parts right here. And this is a build plate from the machine. Being that it has very expensive motion components on it, one of the beautiful parts of this machine are the build plates. You can remove them before taking the parts off. This also increases production because with multiple build plates, you don't have to wait for a part to come off one before you start the print of the next one. One of the main uses for multi-material systems is printing soluble support. When I say soluble, I mean that it's a separate material that builds up and allows the bottom parts of the rigid materials or whatever you're printing to have a really nice finish. And this excels at that, and here's why. The H5-400 has an active desiccator in the filament cabinet, which keeps the material dry. And that's important because in this case, we're using ionic support material, which is quite expensive. What's also great, when you have a multi-material machine that can do flexible materials incredibly well, you can utilize TPU as the infill for the support structure, which is not only gonna save you material, it's gonna save you money. Have a look at this piece. So this is the support material with a TPU infill, and then this material here is flexible for comfort, and it all built on the same build plate and it looks fantastic. The H5400 is a CNC machine that can 3D print, which means we can bring over CNC technologies to additive manufacturing, like fourth and fifth axis. And we're utilizing our fourth axis for rotary 3D printing. It's printed using the rotary axis, which gives it cylindrical layers, and cylindrical layers are going to give it more strength than if it were to be printed on a flat bed try to print this on a flat plate. You're not gonna be able to do it efficiently. You're either gonna use more material or you're gonna have to print it in a way where the strength isn't there. Can you imagine printing it flat and then having to heat form it around a tube? It just doesn't make sense. It makes way more sense to print a part that needs a cylindrical shape on a cylindrical axis like this. And when you have a turret tool changer, everything still applies. You can do the soluble support, you can do milling operations, really the possibilities are endless. So I want you to think about ways that you might utilize something like this. What is a cylindrical shape that you think would benefit from a cylindrical access with additive and milling operations? That's your homework. Down with <gasps> homework? I wanna show you a closer look at this part. Good throw. This is 88A flexible material and it's printed in a cylindrical shape. So this part is exactly how it was designed and you don't have to heat form it or remove supports or process it in any way. Direct from the printer, this part 
is ready to be used. Next up on the H5400 is this hybrid setup. And quite honestly, this is probably one of my favorite things ever. We're gonna break it down so you understand because it's a little bit complex, but once it gets in your head, you're gonna have all sorts of ideas. We've got the active desiccating cabinet and that's holding our CF nylon. You know, nylon is hygroscopic, which that comes into play then keeping it nice and dry. And through that, we're printing it through a carbide nozzle with at 0.8 millimeters in diameter and we're using 0.4 millimeter layers, we're gonna over extrude just a little bit. That's gonna impart more strength to it and it's going to allow us to then utilize a milling operation to bring it to more into spec. More on that in just a little bit. At the bottom is a TPU boot, sort of, almost like a TPU raft. That's gonna give good part adhesion to the build surface and you're not gonna have lifting in the corners. That TPU also raises your nylon parts slightly higher, which means that once the turret changes to a milling tool head, you can mill down to the very bottom of the part without risking damage to your build surface. But look, that's a rotational axis right there. Let's say you wanna mill pockets into your part now, rather than changing your setup and having to grip it a different way and then finding where everything needs to be, you just rotate it into place, bring your milling tool head down and then mill your pockets on either side and your part is then good to go. <laughs> the reason this is all very, very important is because you're utilizing TPU to hold that part in place, which is going to ensure part success. And then you're saving time on setups because using this singular setup, you can print a part that's really strong. You can mill a part to spec, and then you can put pockets on either side because of the rotational axes. Being able to hold this part in your hand is almost otherworldly. It's 3D printed, and then it's milled to spec. So you get accuracy, like a milled part, but it almost feels injection molded. Now we're not talking about waste material. We're not talking about tooling costs. We're not talking about different setups. This was made with a single setup on a single machine, and it's ready to be used. Milling operations can be uh, dirty and messy. I mean, let's be honest, you're spreading chips in places. The H5400 though has an incredible enclosure that keeps it all inside. So there's nothing on the floor. This is also really cool because here, check this out. Come here, come here. There are wipers, there are wipers. So you see the chips here. And if I can move the Y axis, it just empties the chips and you're clean. So far with the H5400, I've shown you milling operations using composite materials, but it's a CNC mill. And so aluminum milling is completely and totally possible. You can do flat milling such as this, or you can do setups with fourth and fifth access and do aluminum milling like that. It works incredibly well. You just have to slow it down a little bit because it's aluminum. You're probably curious though about surface finish. You wanna know if the surface of your aluminum parts can be milled in a way to make it look pretty. It's heavy. Well, of course they're gonna look pretty. Have a look at this. This aluminum part right here was milled on this machine and the surface finish is smooth. So as you can see, surface finish on the aluminum looks fantastic and it just, it looks as good as the rest of the materials you see on this plate. This is gonna be the last part for the product we're making and it's really exciting because I get to show you this configuration of the H5400. It's a milling machine at heart and for those of you that wanna concentrate more on milling operations, this is, this is gonna be right up your alley. The turret itself has one spindle. It's a bit more powerful than other configurations and well, as you can see, the spindle itself can rotate into place and grab one of 14 different tools at the top. Each can be loaded by hand, each the location is visible, and each one can be up to 100 millimeters in length. The shank size on this spindle is gonna be quarter inch, which gives you more options. To make this part, we are using multiple milling operations. We start with a large piece of stock, clamped in fixture blocks on the dovetail bed. We mill the internal pockets and outer contours of the part first, using a quarter inch flat end mill. Then we mill some of the smaller features with an eighth inch end mill. Then we call up a 45 degree chamfer end mill to break the edges. After we cut the parts out of the plate, we can switch to a bed with a vise installed. And this is going to allow us to do our secondary operations from other angles. And the part's done. So I caught that. So we just need to grab the part and go clean things up. Can I, can I? 
first try. Removing parts from the build plate. This is capped on tape and this is TPU. And what I just learned is that adding acetone just a little bit to the edges lets you get a scraper under it and the TPU could be removed incredibly easy. It's already broken loose a little bit here and I could pull really hard if I wanted to just rip it off the build plate, but then you run the risk of damaging your capped on tape. If I add just a smidge of acetone along the edges and get that scraper under, it frees itself incredibly easy. So if I add just a little bit of acetone on the edge, gets under there, I can get a scraper, and then off it comes. <laughs> this is crazy how easy this is. I just learned something today. That's how you get flexible materials off of Kapton tape. And I don't know if this is something you know out there. I don't do a lot of flexible material 3D printing, but apparently TPU adheres to Kapton tape really well, and you can remove it super easily using acetone and a pancake flipper. The more you know. We have printed and milled all the parts needed. We've gotten everything off of the build plates that were on the build plates. Everything's here, and now it's time to assemble the final product. Look at that, we're done. Did you have any idea what we were making? These are called dia blades. They were made all using one machine, the H5400. And these are what I'm going to be putting to the test. It's exciting to think about that everything you see here, well, most of the things were made using one machine. Uh, the springs and the screws and stuff, obviously those are better sourced somewhere else. But everything else, the soft components, the metal bars, the things I put my toes in, the pads that I rest my feet in, the little nubs for the feet to keep traction, all of those were made using the H5400. And these are the dia blades. So all that's left to do is test these to see if they can hold the full Joel. I can't believe this is holding me. I can't either. How does it feel? How does it feel right now? I, uh... you want me to tighten any of them? Uh, no, no, it's a little... So typically when you're standing on something, you've got your ankles to kind of balance yeah. forward and back. <laughs> 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 wait, wait, okay, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Okay. I just, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay, we, need, we need something. Wait, let's, 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 no, I'm not doing this on purpose. Let's put something sticky on the bottom of these poles. Okay. okay. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Okay. So as I was saying, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's an interesting uh, feeling being on something like this because normally you've got your ankle to, to provide forward backward balance yeah. and uh, you don't have this. Yeah, you're that like a gazelle on the back leg. So I'm like a gazelle. Yes. Okay. You're so graceful, Joel. Am I? Is that the word for this? That's that definitely the word for this. <laughs> so. I know, it's like, he's gonna go again. Okay, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. See, I think, so you have to bend your legs a little bit. Oh yeah, it's all, it's all your quads and your tush. Work that quad. Okay, there we go. Wait, there, it's, uh, there we go. There we go, there we go. It's a workout, huh? No, well not on purpose. <laughs> It is. Yeah, okay. Okay. Watch your head. Okay. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, wait, look, look, look. Okay. Oh, God. Right, clear okay. 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 Yeah, okay. I'm an athlete. <laughs> oh. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, I'm learning how to walk again. Okay. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Okay, I'll keep going in circles. Okay. Have I? Okay. Huh. Whew. Oh. Yeah, look, I, I've done it! I've freaking done it! Okay. 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 I did it. 
I did it! A few moments later. Hey. Hey, so this is incredible. Everybody should have a chance to experience this because it's like learning to walk again for the first time. And, and it's, it's crazy how fast your body picks it up once you engage your core, bend your knees a little bit. This is fun. This is legit fun. Like I am, I am impressed. I am so impressed with this. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna step off to see if anyone here wants to have some fun. Thanks for watching. If you made this far, you're awesome. Look in the description for links to Diabase to learn all about the H5400, which made these wonderful devices. I'm out of breath. I'll get you on the more, and as always, high five. <laughs>